Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about Puppet Enterprise 6. I'm going to install it on Ubuntu 18.04. And basically, this is a simple installation. Like, if you want um, if you want a really detailed thing on Puppet, this is, this is likely going to be one of a few videos that I'm going to make. But this is a, a very basic one. Just gets you started with installing Puppet Enterprise 6 um, and installing Puppet's agent on another host and then um, making them make a successful connection by signing doing a CSR request from the agent to the Puppet Enterprise CA and then um, accepting that CSR or signing that C CSR, issuing a certificate to um, the Puppet agent. And we're going to do that through the console, not through the command line like in the last video. So um, you'll find in a, in a common environment, Puppet Enterprise is going to be like they call it the Puppet Master or Puppet Server. And essentially what it is is it's one, div one uh, application, one server with the application running on it that is going to control or manage the configuration on various other servers. And so you'll probably, I mean, in a big environment, you probably have more than one enterprise. Maybe you'll have a, some high availability configuration there. In a, in a medium or small size environment, maybe it's just one server. But your agents is likely going to be multiple, right? Because the whole point of that is to, is to um, control the, the settings and configuration of multiple servers using Puppet. So in this scenario, we're just going to have one agent. We're just going to show how you can install the Puppet Enterprise, how you can install the agent, how you can get the agent connect to the Puppet Master. We're going to um, do a CSR request from the agent to the Enterprise CA. And then in, this, in the Puppet Enterprise Administration Console, you accept that CSR, which essentially signs and, and issues a certificate for um, that CSR on the agent. And then I believe that's exactly what's happening. But and, and then um, now your agent's able to communicate. And we'll show all that through this video. Um, I'm not going to do any manifests in this because I feel that in, a, in an enterprise environment, your manifest shouldn't be manually edited on Puppet Enterprise, but instead you should manage that code through a repository. So I'm going to do another video in integrating Git with Puppet Enterprise and managing your code releases through Git. But anyhow, let's get started. So what I did is I have two servers here. I'm running them in VMware, actually. And I've got... Um, I've got Puppet Master and the, and the Puppet Enterprise Agent. And I just did a, an apt upgrade and an apt update, reverse order that, the update first and then the upgrade. And I just updated the operating system so that it's the latest release of Ubuntu. I started on 18.03, I believe, and now I'm on 18.04. I don't think I'm on 18.04. I don't know. It's one of those versions. It doesn't really matter. So... Um, basically, what we're going to do first is we're, I followed the guides here by Puppet. I'll, sh I'll put some links in the description on where to get that information. Um, but what I did basically is following that guide on the master first, you're basically going to just download the installer package. And it's a couple different steps. Basically, the first thing we're going to do actually is um, download that installer. I think it's going to be pretty sizable. Let's see here. Yeah, maybe I'm going to want to pause this. It says two and a half minutes. I'll be right back when it's done. Okay, so it's done downloading, and now what we're going to do is we're going to download a signing key, and this key was used to sign that package that we downloaded. So, and basically what we want to do is just I want to add, um, I want to add in the key so that we can check if that if there's any modifications to that particular file. So basically, there's a few steps. Again, I got these from the Puppet Guide. We're going to go ahead and download each of these. Um, this ASC file is, uh, I believe, the hash. So if we were to do a cat on that file, it's the hash equivalent of this pre of this file here. So the tar.gz file, if you were to do a PGP signature on it, this should match. Literally, the one I downloaded should match the doc the content that's in this ASC file that I just downloaded from the server. And that that way, you can tell if the couple things like one, maybe you downloaded the tar file, but it didn't completely download and it downloaded incorrectly. If you were to ha if you were to do a signature on against that again, your signature would be different because the size would be different. If somebody modified it, which is pretty rare, but if somebody were to modify that file somehow, and um, when you run the the um, the the uh, signature check on the file you downloaded versus the signature check that they claim the file should have, they should match. And if somebody modified it, they won't match. So that's really what we're doing. So this next command is going to be. I want you to verify the tar.gz using the .asc file here. And you can see that's what it says. Assuming signed data in this, because it was the same file .asc, and then it says it's a good signature. Assuming that the, the key that you added, the fingerprint, the, the primary key fingerprint that you added, which was uh, somewhere up here. Where did I add it? 
Man, there's just too much stuff happening on the screen right here. Trusty be created. There we go. And so basically it matches. So it's it's saying it's good, assuming that you trust the, the key source. So good signature from Puppet. Okay, so that's good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to extract this bad boy here. And it's going to take a little bit of time. I'm not sure how much time because it's really not that big. Yeah, there we go. I, mean, I, I am running this actually on a spindle drive, which might surprise some of you because, what, everybody's got SSD these days, right? Okay, so what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and CD into that Puppet folder. And you can see the files are in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the Puppet install like that. And I'm going to choose option number one, which will force me to um, configure the admin password after the installation, which really is no big deal. Um, this installation takes a little bit of time. It runs through a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and pause it until it's done. All right, so it's done uh, downloading and or installing. Sorry, I got distracted there. So um, the installation completed, and and uh, now it should be running, actually. So what we're going to do, though, first is we're going to set the infrastructure console password, which is pretty easy to do. It's just this puppet infrastructure console, and then you type in a password, and that's going to be mine. It's a super secure password. I would highly recommend that in a production environment, you do not use passwords like that. Please don't. Like that is so easily brute forced, it's not even funny. If you had, if somebody had a hash of this password, you could probably break that on a good computer with um, the appropriate hashing tools in a matter of, I don't know, a second. Anyhow, what they want you to do in the installation was run the puppet agent dash T, and it should run through a whole bunch of stuff. And you know what, the last time I did this, which is kind of interesting, I, I upped the RAM on my box, but last time I did this, it actually kicked me off my SSH session. And I think I was running out of memory. I don't know, we'll see what happens on this, see if it actually kicks me off this time or not. It's kind of it's kind of looking funny. It's kind of looking like a jammed up. Don't jam up, don't jam up. Okay, so also one of the things we want to do, just like in the other video uh, about Puppet Server, the, the open source community edition, is um I, I don't know if i can say are they both open source is puppet enterprise open source just like I, I think i think it is but the community edition is what i was referring to not the enterprise edition um in that environment as well i have to because i don't have dns entries that are local i have to um that match this these vms rather i have to create a host entries for those and so that that's the only reason i'm doing these this isn't necessarily a requirement in an actual per this is definitely not a requirement in a production of a real production environment just in your lab so we're going to go ahead and edit the host file, and I'm just going to paste that right there. That's the IP address of the master. Oops, hold on a second. You see that problem? There we go. And um, the next we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull this bad boy up. Actually, it's the non-encrypted version, I believe. And um, I want to just basically paste that right there. Maybe it's not the non-encrypted. Oh, see, look at that. It redirected me. So let's go ahead and do HTTPS. I can't have it redirect because I don't have any host names on the client that I'm running. So here we go. So now I should be able to log in with that password I just set. And there you are. So we literally have Puppet Enterprise installed that fast. And it's ready to have some agents connect in. So we're going to go ahead and just leave this here. Come back to my multi-tab window. We're going to head over to the agent because that's what we're going to work with now. And I'm going to do a very similar thing where I'm going to switch to the temp folder. I want to download the, inst the agent installer. And this is actually a Debian package, a .deb file. And we're going to get that straight from puppet.com. Don't download it from any anywhere else. Puppet should be the source for these things. And you can see that it's now there. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say apt install. I'm going to specify this particular file and let it do its ripping. Shouldn't take very long. Agent's not a very large package especially not compared to the Puppet Enterprise server. Okay, so then what we also want to do is, just like the other hosts, I'm going to... Oops, it's not a new file. It's not var, dude. It's etc. Um, I need to put in some host entries to make up for the lack of DNS in this environment. And those are the host entries for the Puppet Master so that it knows where to connect. Uh, we also want to edit... Before we start this up, I want to edit the, the Puppet Labs Puppet conf, conf file. And there's some stuff I want to stick in there to make this guy um, have the correct puppet agent name. Like agent should change based off of the server. In this example, we're just going to go with puppet agent because um, I only have one host and it's only one agent, right? I don't have multiple in this particular test environment. Um, just for fun, let's change that to pup enterprise agent, which matches <coughs> my SSH entry there. 
I'm going to save this thing off. And the next thing we want to do is switch over to the Puppet binary folder. And I want to say Puppet, not put, put it, Puppet, Agent, dash T for test. And what it should do is run the first time. So this is what happened. I, I did a certificate request to the Puppet master CA, which is acting as a CA, and it's basically not signed yet, right? So there hasn't been anything issued to that that CSR. So now that I've got a CSR request going, I'm going to head back over to the Puppet GUI here. And if you go to unsigned certs, you can, so, so keep in mind, so it, Puppet Enterprise uses Ajax and Ajax is a web technology that allows you to update content of a page without actually like updating the page. It's kind of like a, it's a JavaScript way of, of updating content without refreshing the page. And I've noticed with the agent, at least in my environment, my test environment here, sometimes like you click on this unsigned search, and you're like, where the heck is this unsigned search? It literally took me 10 minutes to figure this out. And what was happening was this page was not getting updated. It was just quickly changing the content like that, but it really wasn't get, it wasn't doing a request back to this content. So it didn't get updated. So sometimes you just have to click on and then hit the refresh button, make it actually load more content. And you can see now that I've got this Puppet Enterprise agent waiting. There's two ways you can accept it. You can accept all, which if you had 100 of these here, it would accept all of them, or you can just accept the individual. In our case, there's either button does the exact same thing because there's only one thing waiting. So I'm going to go ahead and hit accept. And then I want to hit refresh here just to make sure. And sure enough, there you go. You should also be able to see this under nodes now, which, again, it's not refreshing. So hit refresh. Uh, actually, you know what? You know why there's no node? There's no node because I haven't done, I haven't actually done the puppet agent T. So now that we've issued that, certificate to this. I'm going to run it again. Now it should be able to retrieve and collect a bunch of facts, send it up to the Puppet server, and there should be a node listed now back in this web portal. So let's go ahead and open that web portal, hit nodes, and you can see there it is, Puppet Agent. Bam. So now I literally have a node here. So just like in the uh, community version of Puppet, you can target some, some manifests specifically to this node or to your entire environment or to how, however you want to do it. But we're not going to talk about that in this video because, again, I feel like Puppet Enterprise um, is an enterprise product, which means that you need to manage that manifest and any of the code configuration files in Puppet using something like Git. And we're going to do that in another video. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was beneficial to you, um, get you started in your world of Puppet. Uh, thanks for watching.